Hey everybody, welcome to another Tip Tuesday. Camping season is right around the corner. I think campground opens in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So, one of the things we all do when we're getting ready for camping is dewinterizing, summarizing, whatever you want to call it. I wanted to come to you and see if you could give some tips and tricks and things to look out for for dewinterizing and getting your camper ready to hit that campground the first week. Sound good? Yeah, so we we have both dewinterizing and summarizing. They're kind of the same thing, only we, we call them two different things because for us a dewinterizing is just flushing with water, getting it ready to camp. The summarizing is a little bit more involved, but first thing you have to do on either one of those is let's get water hooked up and flush out that antifreeze that's in the system. Yep. So, um, most of the time, if you had us winterize it, everything will be ready to just hook water up and, and go in and start running. If you did it yourself, some people leave faucets open, so you probably run inside, close all the faucets, shower head included, you don't want it spraying all over the place, uh, hook your water up, start flushing the system, which it's all you do is walk inside, open the hot, open the cold, let's just get all the pink out of there. Yep. Um, Another step that I would suggest is they take like spring fresh, for yep. instance. So this stuff, you're just gonna pour right in your fresh tank, um, the whole thing, and then uh, top it off with water. And this is just a sanitizer, just a, like a deodorizer sanitizer. It's gonna clean the antifreeze residue out of the lines, make it smell a little more pleasant. Uh, that's the difference for us in summarizing and dewinerizing. Gotcha. We add the spring fresh, let that sit in the lines for about an hour so get that all in there you've, you've run every faucet you have water coming out now you're going to let it sit so then there's a couple of other things that you could be checking while that's sitting um, to get it ready to camp okay so first thing uh we haven't filled the water heater yet right because we we have it on bypass we're just going to flush all the antifreeze out you don't you don't want to you don't need to run the spring fresh and the antifreeze through the water heater to get it out so but you're gonna to wanna to come out and probably inspect your anode rod. So this one, if you look at it, looks like you would think this is bad, right? This is all worn away here. You got all this pitting going on, but actually that's, this is a sacrificial part. This is designed to be eaten all the way down to just that inner wire. Gotcha. So this one's only about 10, 15% gone. You run these down to where 80% of it's gone. But this, this stuff, most of them are magnesium, uh, some of them are aluminum, depends on uh, where you're at, what type of water you're going to be dealing with. The most common is magnesium, but that's what this is designed to do. So that the impurities right. in the water is, instead of attacking the tank, it's going to attack this. So it's protecting the tank, so it doesn't uh, corrode the tank away. So actually this one would be good. If it's me, I'm going to take a wire brush, clean all this threads up, put some new thread tape on there. Make sure you're not going to go run a risk of getting any leaks or anything. Right. Right, and so then, then you're going to put that in, tighten it down, inch and sixteenth socket okay. for that, which a lot of people, if you already own the camper by now, you probably figured that out. Um, if you're new to it and you haven't really done that yet, uh, inch and sixteenth to put that in on the Suburban brand. Okay. That was or seven eighths, I believe, or fifteen sixteenths, one or the other. Plastic plug, a little easier to get out. So, um, so you're going to go out and inspect that and go ahead and get that in and ready to be filled after we kind of flush clean water to flush all the spring fresh back out. Gotcha. So you're waiting an hour. But while you've ran all the faucets or have them pressurized now, uh, your pump's on, you check your anode rod, you got it in. I would go inside, visually check every fitting that you can see. I and mean, I don't tear cabinets apart and go looking for stuff, but right. you know, open your cabinet door, look underneath your kitchen sink. You can see where the fittings are going in the faucet. Just make sure you don't have any leaks on any of those areas. It's common over the winter. We had a pretty cold February. Yes. Um, so temperatures drop way down. Antifreeze is only good to certain temperature drop, uh, but like negative 50, but wind chill is gonna affect that. Uh, just make sure you haven't developed any of the leaks because you don't wanna get to the campground, have your water hooked up, you're camping and find out, you know, you have a floor soaked all of a sudden. Right. And you're, you're far away. Now you're having to scurry, get a fan, get blankets, towels, whatever, trying right. to get the water up. It could be a mess. So check that before you go out. And especially the valve on the back of the toilet. Okay. Toilet valves, notorious for cracking. The plastic uh, on the back side, even though you get a lot of good antifreeze through it, it still cracks. We see a uh, few dozen a year, probably. Okay. Out of all the ones that get winterized, the toilet valves still break. Um, so 
that's one that you may not notice right away because it's on the back of the toilet and if it's just sitting there dripping and if that water is running away you don't see it on the floor a lot of people don't you know look behind the toilet all the time right, so, right. unless you happen to be sitting in level and it's running out um, so that's a problem spot that you'll want to check okay um, so hopefully by now you've killed an hour or so I'm sure you can find some other things maybe walk around look at your seals and stuff checking just your seals kind of thing. Like you got time to kill you don't have to be in a hurry with the spring fresh at all it can sit in there for a while check the roof seals all that you're done with all that we'll go ahead and flush all that uh, spring fresh out with clean water then we'll go ahead and turn the bypass on a water heater fill it up mm -hmm. and make sure that you don't turn it on until you fill it up with water okay uh, it's gonna you can burn the element up and then you're gonna get to campground and not have hot water so a typical suburban how long does that take to fill up uh they're either usually six gallon or ten gallon they are making some 12 gallon ones now um a few minutes just a few minutes yeah it's just water's pouring straight in you ever leave the pressure on this uh on yep. the pressure leaf valve right here water start coming out you know you're Cool. and then you're okay to turn it on if it were me before i go camping i'm probably gonna if i have power at home that i'm plugged into uh probably gonna go ahead and turn it on make sure it works yep, make, make sure, sure everything works at home because it's yeah. much easier to deal with little problems at home than it is when you're at the campground and trying to relax yeah yeah you don't want to be out there working on everything when you're supposed to be enjoying it. so overall it's a very simple process but you mm -hmm. need to take your time you need to make sure you check all of these things and be thorough because it's going to make your camping experience so much better, right? Yeah, yeah. Before you go out, uh, you, you make sure you do it before you get there. <laughs> right. So right. It, you're going to, you'll still enjoy your camping experience probably, or at least everybody else will while you're fixing all the other <laughs> stuff. So, Well, Josh, uh, thanks a lot. Yeah. I appreciate it. Is there anything else you can think of before we end it? I mean, I... You know what? Don't forget your outside faucets too. Oh, good point. You, you know, your and, shower, and if yeah. you've got an outside kitchen, make sure you check your outside kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of, I mean, I feel like most of them have at least some kind of an outdoor shower now. Yeah, you know, just lot. about all of them, yeah. All of them have outside kitchens, too. So. Yeah, so guys, don't yeah. forget to take your time. Check everything. Don't be in a hurry. Grab you a beer while you're doing it. Relax, right? I mean, go ahead and start I mean, your relaxation. An hour, so two. Two, maybe three. Who knows? <laughs> Guys, thanks again for watching this week's Tip Tuesday. As always, if there's something you want to see, I've got a lot of experts like Josh around here that I can reach out to, so leave a comment down below. Talk to you soon.